Hi there. Today I'm going to be going through how to do 2D airfoil simulations in Star CCM Plus. So the first step is to get a CSV file of the profile that you're wanting to um, do a simulation on. So I go to airfoil tools and pick my profile. Um, I'm using the CL5 for this one and I want to send it to Airflow Plotter. And now, since I'm wanting to simulate a wing element, I'm going to reverse this so that the profile flips and then set my chord length. Um, I'm going to be doing 100 and, or 350 millimeters and just update that plot. And then what you want to do is download a CSV file of coordinates and open that up. So now that you have your um, CS or your Excel file open, um, you want to delete all this stuff up above as well as uh, delete those rows as well as scroll down and delete um, all the rest of this camber line stuff as well. So now you're left with just the coordinates of the points on your wing. And what you want to do is, um, in a column over, um, you want to do a function. Um, product is how I do it. Um, your first um, point there, and you want to divide it by a thousand. The reason that we have to do this is because when you import the CSV file into Star CCM Plus, it imports it as meters and not millimeters. So we have to do that conversion beforehand. So I'll just drag this down. and across. And then you need to add a third row of um, all zeros because this represents your z-axis points. So this is your x value, your y value. So you need to add the z one as well. And drag that all the way down. So the next step, which I won't show, is you need to copy your new divided set of points and paste them into a new Excel file so that you can have this value in your A1 spot. Because if I go to delete these values, it gets rid of all of those ones. So once you once you have your new file with just these points in it, what you want to do is file, save as, and then you want to save it as <coughs> a uh, comma delimited, a CSV file, and just save that. Okay, now that we have star CCM plus loaded, I'm going to go file, new, and we can either do serial or parallel on host. Um, I choose to do parallel on host just so it's a bit faster as it uses multiple uses multiple cores instead of just one at a time with serial. Um, and to find out how many cores your computer has, um, you'll have to search that up online. However, mine has six cores, but since this is just 2D, I'm obviously not going to use all six cores. And OK. <clears throat> so now that we have our new 
um, simulation open, you want to go into the geometry tab and right click um, 3D CAD models and new. Once we're in here, we want to right click 3D CAD model 1 and import 2D curves. We then want to select the CSV file of coordinates of the element that we're wanting to do and open that and import as a 2D spline. As you can see there, our sketch is now, um, our profile is now in star CC and plus. And what we want to do is in the XY plane, um, we want to create a new sketch. And this sketch that we're making now is our fluid domain for the simulation. So I like to go a bit below and also above and quite a bit behind. Like that and okay. Next thing that we want to do is select sketch one, which is your airfoil, right click and extrude. Um, all of these settings are fine. However, we do want to change the body interaction to none. Okay. We then want to go to sketch two and do the same thing. Right click, extrude. Um, the 0 0.1 meters is fine. And again, change the body interaction to none. Okay. So next, um, we want to rename some of the faces. So this face and this face are two vertical ones. Uh, we want to rename them as our symmetry planes. So I just do it sim for short. Our uh, right click and hide one of the big sides. And so as we can see, our, we're wanting our velocity to come this way over the airfoil. So we want to assign this space. We want to rename that as our inlet and the other one as our outlet. Um, the next important step is to select the face of your profile, as you can see there. Right click and rename that as, um, I'm calling it element one. Okay. So if we go to the side menu again, um, click the plus mark there we can see our two different bodies. Now what you want to do is for body one, which is the element, right click, transform, and rotate. So as you, can, as you can see, it automatically sets it to rotate 90 degrees, and it also sets the, to rotate about the lab coordinate system. This is okay because our leading edge is coincident with the origin of the lab coordinate system. So over here, we want to set our angle of attack to whatever you'd like. In this case, I'm going to do eight degrees, enter, and you can see it updates and press okay. Now, after you perform your rotate, you want to select body one and control click body two. So they're both highlighted, right click, Boolean and subtract. Now, depending on the order that you click them, they'll either be in the right spot or the wrong. I like to remove them either way just to make sure. So the target body is the body that's gonna remain and the tool body is the body that's gonna be removed from the target. So for the target body, I select the fluid domain, and for the tool body, 
I select the element. And make sure that face names is selected, but the other two don't. And press OK. So now I can see that we have a nice hole in our fluid domain, which is exactly what we want. What we want. I'm going to right click and restore all the faces and we will close the 3D CAD. Okay, now that we've closed out of our 3D CAD, um, our model will show up in the drop down menu. We want to right click and click new geometry part. Now in this menu, uh, keep everything the same. However, I prefer to change the tessellation density to fine, just for a bit more accuracy. Okay, and then after you do that, in the parts drop down menu, a new part will appear. And what we can do is up top in this menu, we can create a new geometry scene. And as you can see, our part shows up in there exactly like it was in the CAD. So next what you want to do is right click operations in the geometry drop down menu, new mesh badge for 2D meshing and select our body to and OK. What this allows, what this tells Star Season Plus is to not worry about creating any volume meshes or not to worry about doing the simulation in 3D. It's just doing a 2D face and right click that and execute. As you can see, um, back up in our parts, we got a red dot by this body. And as you can see, our surface icons changed. So now what we want to do is we want to assign our parts to regions. So right click body two, assign parts to regions. And under this menu, we want to create one region for all parts. However, we want to create a boundary for each part surface. And apply and close. So now if we go down to regions, and keep on clicking and into boundaries. We have our outlet, inlet, default, and our elements. So what we want to do is right click our inlet or select our inlet and down in the properties menu, change that to a velocity inlet for our outlet. We want to select it in the properties menu, create, turn that into a pressure outlet. And for our top and bottom, we want that to be a symmetry plane. Now I noticed here that our two different side symmetries never made it to the region. So I'm just going to create a new boundary and call it them, call it sim and assign it to be a symmetry plane. So now what we want to do is back under operations, right click new and automated mesh 2D. Select body two and then what measure you want. I use polygonal measure just because it's what I've seen from other videos as well as it just works for me. And then you also want to select prism layer measure and OK. So now we'll get a new drop down menu and some default controls. So if I were to execute this as it is right now, or right click execute um, and then create a new mesh scene. You can see that the grains of the mesh are very large and our profile looks nothing like it's supposed to be. 
So under default controls, um, select base size, and that's set at one meter right now. I'm going to change it down to be uh, one centimeter. And now if I execute that mesh again, we can see that it's a lot, a lot finer and we can actually see our profile. So now what I want to do is the target surface size. Um, we'll leave for now and we want to go to custom controls. Right click, new, and surface control. Now, in that drop down menu, we want to right click, edit. And now we've got to select the part surfaces that we want. So, click the side, and then in the drop down, we want to select our element. So then, in the controls drop down menu, we want to, we want to change the um, target surface size to custom, as well as the minimum surface size to custom as well. And then if we close, or as well, one thing that I add to these sims is um, custom prism layers. And I wanted to customize the number of layers. So now if I close the controls menu um, and go to our values, our, we can select our target surface size. As you can see, the mesh right now is fairly fine. However, what I want to do is have the target surface size. I'll put as um, a quarter of a centimeter, 0 0.25 centimeters. Um, custom prism values, the number of prism layers, uh, I'd like to go to three. And then the minimum surface size, um, absolute, I'll do um, one millimeter. And close that. And now, if we execute the measure again, we can see that we now have an extra prism layer there, and our surface still looks very nice. Now, as you can also see, our mesh gets really fine along its edges, which we don't need because we're just worrying about the um, the profile itself. So if we go to target surface size overall, um, we can do an absolute value. And let's just say we'll do 10 centimeters. And execute that. So there you can see that's much larger. Um, I might actually make it a bit smaller. Um, we'll go five centimeters. And execute. So there now we have all of our mesh set up for the simulation. Alrighty, now that we have our mesh set up, we can now select our physics. So under Continua, um, a physics one node will appear after you execute your mesh and we'll right click and select models. Um, under this can change depending on what you're trying to get out of it. I've found that I always pick steady time, uh, since we're putting the air pool through air, we'll pick gas. Um, a coupled flow, um, constant density, because we're assuming this is an incompressible flow, as well, and then we want to select turbulent. And now the turbulence model, 
um, is up to you to select. Um, I find that the spell art all Myris Turbulence um, works well for me. It's what Star CCM Plus uses in its tutorials um, for incompressible flow over wing elements. Um, you can choose whichever model you'd like. Uh, I'm just going to go with that one and close. So now that we have our physics in there, we want to select our initial values or our initial conditions, um, including our pressure and velocity and whatnot. Uh, pressure I have set as, or I keep set as zero just as a reference as it references to zero and then uh, under velocity um, is where you select, set the velocity that you want your to test your flow at. So in this case, since our current system has velocity in the positive, we want the flow going in the positive x direction under properties um, in the before the comma, um, set your velocity. In this case, obviously setting mine at 17 meters per second, which is about 60 kilometers per hour. And after that, um, you're done with your um, physics and you can subtract out of that. Next up is setting your stopping criteria. So we want to select the solvers node and then steady. And you can see this stopping criteria folder comes up. Right click and select new criteria. And we want to do a fixed steps. And then a node will appear for fixed steps. In this case, I'm going to be leaving it at 1000. Um, because for 2D simulations, um, perform really fast. So I don't need to worry about reducing the amount of steps. Um, if I were to do a 3D model or a larger simulation, I would um, decrease the steps per se. It just depends on what will ensure um, your data converges. So after that, what we want to do is we want to create our um, reports to get the data from our simulation. So what you want to do is under reports, right click, new report, and you want to do a force report. I'm going to right click and rename this one to be downforce. Okay. And under its properties, um, I want to select parts, regions, and I want to select our element region. As well, I want to change the direction to be in the um, negative y direction because, as you can see from our current system, the downforce would be pointing in the negative y direction. So zero comma negative one comma zero enter and that just that so, and that is the, our downforce report created then what you want to do is right click the report and create monitor and plot from report and now we have a downforce monitor plot and under monitors we have a downforce monitor so now if you next, um, you can either start a new report or you can just right click, copy the downforce report, select reports, right click and paste. And it'll come with a copy of downforce. Rename that as drag. Okay. And under in the properties for the drag report, um, all we need to do is um, change what direction we're calculating the force from. In this case, our drag force will be in the x direction. So we want to do 1, comma, 0, comma, 0. Boom. And since we just copied it, our region is still set properly. And again, right click, 
create monitor and plot from report. So now we are all set up to perform our simulation. Alrighty, so now that we have all of our mesh set up and our report set up, we can go to the top or we can go to our downforce monitor plot and select run up at the top to run our simulation. So as you can see, it's quite spread, but it is simulating very fast. As you can see, it's converged to a solution around 350 iterations. So technically I could have decreased the amount of iterations that we wanted it to run and get a similar result. Actually, it probably would have been around 500, 500 iterations would have been fine. However, we can then move our cursor over to the very end and we can see that we make 0.2455 newtons of downforce. And if we go to our drag monitor plot, we can see that we make 0.04 newtons of drag. All right, so now if we open up a calculator, we can put in the values that we got from our downforce and monitor plot. So 0 0.245516 divided by 0 0.048745. So as you can see, our lift to drag ratio or downforce to drag ratio is essentially six newtons of lift per newton of drag. Okay, now that we've evaluated our downforce and drag monitor plots, um, let's actually visualize our flow around the airfoil. So what we'll want to do is right click scenes, new scene, and scalar. So as you can see, our geometry pops up there, and we we'll want to right click the select function area and scroll down and for this one I'll set the pressure. So as you can see um, we can only stay in 2D obviously since we did a 2D simulation and we can see that for this profile we get a lot of negative pressure underneath the profile which is creating our downforce as well as um, some more positive pressure above as well as you can see the impact of the leading edge with the increase of pressure there causing some of our drag. Um, what we can do is we can also create a new scalar scene and right click again, go down to velocity and velocity magnitude. And here we can see that because of the decreased pressure we get a large increase in velocity beneath the wing. However, we can also see um, that there's a decrease in velocity towards the upper of the wing. What this tells us is that our flow is actually detaching from the element right around here when the more negative blue starts. So now once you've done this, you can go back easily um, into your geometry through your CAD models, right click, edit. It'll open up and go to your rotate body, right click, edit, um, and change your angle of attack. Um, we'll say, let's go to 12 degrees this time. Okay, close that. Close the 3D CAD, um, expand your parts, right click body to update, and then go to operations, 
execute your badging for 2D meshing and execute your mesh again. Now, um, we need to clear our previous solution. So in the top, there's the mesh button with the X that will clear our generated meshes, which will get rid of our solutions. OK. And we'll have to execute our mesh again. That's fine because it takes two seconds. And now we can run our simulation again. Alrighty. So as you can see, compared to last time, where we made uh, 0.24 newtons in downforce, we now make 0.28 newtons. However, in our drag monitor, previously we made 0.04 uh, newtons of drag, and now we make 0.5055. So now, unfortunately, um, I haven't found a way to make this easier but we have to delete our two scalar scenes and make them again so new scalar right click our function scroll down to pressure as you can see we've reduced the pressure concentration at the leading edge and there's more positive pressure in front of the element. And then if we, which cause, which has caused more downforce for us. However, and then if we go new scene, scalar to velocity, we can see that we now have a much wider spread of uh, increased velocity beneath and also a bit larger above. Now if I go to our drag plot or our downforce plot here, I'll calculate it off screen this time. Um, 0.287764 divided by 0.055895. Our lift to drag ratio is now only 5.148. So although we are creating more downforce, our lift to drag ratio is about a newton less. So now you, if you want, you can keep on iterating, trying different angles of attack. Um, to see, um, to reach your required downforce level or lift to drag ratio. That'll be all for this one. Thanks for watching.